Knives, forks and spoons have been around for a long time, so every now and then the bespoke cutlery makers like to do a little experimenting. This spork might just catch on, but until it does it seems most of us are happy with a standard set of cutlery. But just how are these implements put together? Modern cutlery can be made from a variety of substances. At this factory they use steel which is plated with chromium nickel. It doesn't rust and more importantly it doesn't affect the flavor of the food which some metals can do. Blanks are cut from a sheet of metal and this sheet is ideal for making both spoons and forks. However at this point the metal is thick enough for the handle but too thick for the working end so it needs to be flattened. To make spoons the ends need to be wider so the metal is pressed more often. What the worker ends up with looks like a miniature shovel, hardly the right shape for soup. So the shovel blade is cut into the right shape, then it's put into this press which will transform it into a shapely bowl. While the spoon bending is going on in one part of the factory, other workers are forging forks. Again they need to shape the little shovels first, so a press will cut off any unnecessary metal. These blanks are now passed on to this worker who has the most important job in fork production. All day long he sits here carving splines into the forks. Splines are the pointy bits you spear your food with. Washing forks is fiddly enough, but if you're making luxury dinnerware you also have to make sure you wash the press before you can actually do any bending. Any dirt would mark the metal and the fork would have to be thrown out. The freshly bent cutlery is then sent off for a quick polish to remove all the sharp edges. The worker will also grind down the surfaces so there aren't any unwanted fork related injuries. So we've seen the forks and the spoons, but what about the knives? Whereas forks and spoons are made from one piece, the knife is made out of several. The handles for these knives have two sides which will be joined together leaving a hollow in the middle. The reason for this will become clear later. But first we need a blade. These are made up of stainless steel and need to be shaped so they're sent off to the furnace to be warmed up. Once they're hot enough, the blacksmith will remove them with his tongs and hammer them into shape using a huge press. Then using another press he will cut out the blades from the hammered steel. These are then fed back into the furnace so they can be hardened. When they emerge, they're tough inside but filthy outside. You certainly wouldn't want to use one to butter your toast with, so they're sent to an automated grinder to be scraped clean. Now it's time to put the blade and handle together. The two sides of the handle have been joined and the worker will now fill this with sand. This gives the knife a good weight in the user's hand. Next comes a quick pinch of resin and it's time to glue the whole lot together. This bizarre contraption helps him align each knife. Molten metal is poured in with the sand. The resin he added creates a bond between the two, making the handle solid. The blade then becomes a lid to seal the handle tight. Of course, now everything is filthy again, so the new cutlery needs a good shine. And what use would a knife be without a sharp edge? While the blades are getting sharpened, we can catch up once more with our forks and spoons which are now getting a plating. They're given a bath in silver which gives them their luxurious final sheen. But of course different customers have different tastes. If they want a brushed steel effect, the cutlery makers use a tough Mexican grass to create this effect. The grass grinds away the shine but leaves a nice textured finish. However, it's also left the cutlery rather dirty again, so there's just time for one more quick dip to clean them off. 
So the next time you're slaving over a huge bowl of washing up, don't get bent out of shape. Leave the bending to the cutlery-making experts.